Y'all remember this movie? I do. Had it on DVD. You watched it, got all the way to the ending, and you never forgot it. Even though the topic of conversation was already hella relevant way before this movie came out, it was something else to visually see it here with the likes of Leon and Andrew Ellis. This may be one of the few times that I open my video with a disclaimer. If you have no desire or you may feel triggered to discuss things like the virus, getting tested, knowing your status, please do not watch this video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss Cover. Now this movie is from 2007 and it stars Angelou Ellis. Now before we get into all things, you know what? It's a little dusty in here. I think you got something in your eye. I can blow it out for you. I need you guys to drop down <laughs> and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that. Then we're gonna come back and discuss. Child, if anybody just happens to walk up to your man and say, hey, you got something in your eye, I can blow it out for you if you want me to. Just walk away. <laughs> just walk away. You know what? Let him blow it out. I don't want to no more. Go back, 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 back. Now that you guys have hopefully subscribed to see more of me, let's get into this movie. But before we jump into the film, I have to give a shout out to the person who paid for it and requested it. So if you happen to follow your man, your husband, your boyfriend, and catch him in a compromising position, it's not because of me. It's because of this person right here. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting me and paying for this content. Getting into this film, it was produced and directed by Bill Duke. Now at this point, your girl in the channel is knee deep in all things Bill Duke. From things like A Rage in Harlem, Hoodlum, Sister Act 2, Deep Cover. But unlike those, this is not some lavish cinematic affair. Even though we have a star-studded, legendary Black cast here, from a visual standpoint, this isn't a grandstanding period piece or some neo-noir dripped in red cinematography. This movie was made on a really, really low budget and it was clearly meant to shock, inform, and send a message. Watching this now, I was trying to figure out why this movie stuck with me so hard and why it was so impactful for me. If you were a man or a woman of a certain age, at that time, you could not even escape the term down low. Now, of course, there was the first meeting. He's in the front, I'm in the back. He likes the front, I like the back. I'm not beat up, your tickle bit is in the air. I, down low, down low. Gotta keep it, you know, it was that down low. <laughs> and then later on, you know, mid 90s, early 2000s, down low took on a completely different meaning often pertaining to men who may present themselves as happily married to a woman, happily married with kids, maybe just in a relationship with a woman, but secretly sleep with men on the side. And how strong of a role at the time it may have played in the transmission of the HIV or the AIDS virus. The kicker really was that even though these conversations were happening and existing long before this movie came out, we had never seen it. When it came to black people, at the time, I didn't really see a whole lot of films that predicted us in those spaces. Coming from a black household that didn't really have the tough conversations, it was up on myself to go and seek certain things out. And when I did seek out information, you would see so many documentaries on the virus that were often the same, fighting for those equal rights, sexual liberation, the start of the virus, its heavy impact, the stigma, the death toll, activism, the memorial quilt, failed trials, AZT, maybe even patient zero, but 
all of these stories were told from a white male perspective, which was absolutely no problem for me. I just simply wanted to be informed. And then you get into film. I got movies like Philadelphia, The Dallas Buyers Club, The Band Played On, which I swear I watched at least twice through high school. Once again, kind of giving us the same thing. And of course you knew all about the celebrities, your Magic Johnson, Easy e Arthur Ashe, Alvin Ailey. But once again, those were all black men. Then getting into the mid nineties, naturally the conversation seemed to go dormant. We were solely focusing on treatment and being informed. However, this was also around the time that the virus began to impact black men and especially black women the most, but we really didn't get to see that. Even when we get into shows like Pose that, you know, give really high representation now, it's always kind of set in a period drama. Unlike something like a cover that was very much so set in the then and now, which had a shook like, oh, <laughs> The first thing I watched and I was like, oh, uh, me too? It was a movie. It used to be on YouTube. It was called One Week. I don't know where that movie is or where you gotta go to find it, but it is practically stripped off the grid and non-existent now. Movies like Life Support with Queen Latifah. The main thing that kept coming up was Precious. I was like, Precious? <laughs> now, of course, if you've seen Precious, you know exactly what it's about, but we're not gonna act like the diagnosis of Precious doesn't get lost, you know, in the midst of everything else going on in that film. So I don't really think about that one as, you know, an informative piece of material. Now I said all that to say, I swear I ain't gonna do all this. We supposed to be on the film. <laughs> you know, I just get lost uh, in my notes sometimes. It made me remember the importance of seeing ourselves in these type of dynamics and just being informed. I can remember not being able to turn on my TV or turn a corner without seeing, you know, know your status, get tested. It was always everywhere. And it's just practically non-existent now because it's not so much the death census that it used to be. You know, it's so treatable. You can go absolutely undetectable, you know, live long and happy lives. There's all these advancements in medication, other avenues to get informed now. But I also feel like like it's not in the forefront anymore and I really wish that it still was. We can't really get into the treatment if we don't actually know our status. Please drop down and tell me when is the last time you were tested and how often you do get tested. Let's get into the movie. Now we are introduced to Valerie here, portrayed by Anjanou Ellis, who has been on my radar as an actress for a very long time, all the way since In Too Deep. She is so good and so underrated. Whether you are watching her in The Help, Lovecraft Country, Ray, now old Marianne, you know you should look fine. She is gonna deliver a performance every single time. Now Valerie is under investigation and is just downright under arrest for the shooting and supposed murder of her husband. She is trying her best to plead her innocence and plead her case. Even though all the evidence may point directly to me as a God-fearing, Christian, loving mother and wife, why would I kill anyone, let alone murder what looks to be my own husband? To plead my case and proclaim my innocence, I have to start from the beginning. Now instantly, Valerie is painted as the wife with the life that anybody would want, an inspiring photographer who is giving up and making a sacrifice for her successful psychiatrist husband, moving from Atlanta to Philadelphia for opportunities and financial security. And even though I don't know anybody aside from my best friend Zara, who is looking to help me with my photography career, it's gonna be okay. This is the best thing for my family. But as we peel back the layers and get more information on husband Dutch, it doesn't really seem that way, especially when we meet Monica, who's not only a colleague and an ex-friend, but also an ex-girlfriend, who makes it very clear that even though she's married, she is very much so interested in being Dutch's sneaky link. That may not necessarily need to be all that sneaky due to she and her husband having an agreement. Now what that agreement is, we really don't know, but Dutch looks to be familiar with it already. We are made to be aware that 
not only are they facilitating his job and his business venture and how much money he's going to be making there, but his presence at their anniversary party is not a suggestion, it's a demand, and Dutch seems to have absolutely no say-so in the matter. Now, <laughs> friends or not, why do these two individuals have so much involvement and say so in your life and your finances? We have somebody like Valerie who is very invested in God. He is the placeholder in their relationship as well as the foundation to their marriage. But all of a sudden, Dutch has no interest to join church or go to the altar or even attend church anymore. He is very, very bothered. After we attend this anniversary party, where Monica is a whole lot more touchy than she needs to be with somebody's husband, really flirtatious, as well as her husband who's friendly and maybe a little flamboyant. Well, at least they wanted us to think that he was flamboyant because you know, uh, he got on a pink shirt. Like <laughs> when you get into a character actor like Roger Smith, you got to give me a little bit more than a pink shirt. He's just an over the top actor, period. But it just feels like everybody is in on something that Valerie isn't a part of and we're getting increasingly suggestive comments along with the vibes that maybe they have an open marriage, maybe they're swingers, who knows? But when Leon rolls up, <laughs> like only Leon can roll up, always rolling up, I swear Leon just, you know, walks in slow motion. <laughs> Leon can be walking fast as hell and he's just, in my mind, walking in slow motion like the handsome Leon that he is, looking like JT from the Five Heartbeats along with a hint of David Ruffin. Look good, Leon always looks good. But Ryan Chambers, the superstar singer here, why would he be sitting and talking to the likes of Valerie? You know, I just love your song. What you gonna do when they hurt you? Where you gonna go when they lie to you? Who you gonna call then run to when you know your life ain't right? You sleeping with her? knows it like oh my god <laughs> now ryan rolling up with the suggestive lyrics you know you and your husband never dance to any of my songs like uh once you get into the ending and you see the deception going on right in front of valerie's face Ryan Chambers, being the celebrity that he is, has invested interest in Val along with her husband from the moment that he meets her. Now, Maya is also here as this current woman, but they ain't give no lines. <laughs> they didn't give Maya, but you know, one or two lines. She could have stood over there and, your lips start telling me yes. Like, they, they could have gave baby a couple more lines. Same with Patty. Patty is just here to be Patty LaBelle. <laughs> Patty is supposed to be here as an additional character, singer in the choir, woman of the church, who also has a son that is gay, but the plot doesn't really go anywhere. So as far as I'm concerned, Patty was here to, Ooh. Patty was here for that. That, that. that was all Patty was here for. The cast is very, very thick. Now, Valerie, who can maybe feel that something is a bit off with her husband since they touched down, she does begin to question him. Of course, he, diminishes her concerns with, I'm under a lot of pressure, don't feel some type of way because I didn't join church, I'll join later. Monica is just being Monica, there's nothing going on there. Besides, my husband is not only a loving husband and father, but he has been extremely good to me up until this point, and he is still actively doting on me, loving on me, trying to initiate sex with me on the regular. What exactly do I have to complain about? Maybe the fact that your spouse is saying something without really saying anything at all. Pretty much making these statements in the realm of, would you still love me if I wasn't who you always thought I was? Now, if you know, then you know why church plays such a big role in this movie. You get into somebody like Valerie being very heavy into her faith, heavy into church, as well as her best friend Zyra portrayed here by Vivica Fox, who is always packing and clearly has been into some tanks. But we also get into things like the first lady and the pastor being very open, very receptive to everybody, always here to listen, always here to minister to the likes of women. Then you get into, you know, the two old you know sisters of the church often have the most to say sit on the front row doing sunday service with their big old hats act holier than thou but are often non-receptive and extremely judgmental of anybody who doesn't walk properly in the faith 
like they do. Not y'all not being inviting to a gay man who would like to join your group and discuss conversation. Not, not you having children out of wedlock. Not you like, it's just so much judgment. A lot of that old school churching as to why a lot of people don't have any desire to go to church out of fear of being judged. We also have another member by the name of Charlotte who is very mousy, very quiet and stays to herself. Now about 40% of the movie is us as an audience reverting back to Valerie, pleading her case, telling her story. It's extremely repetitive, even though we have goats like Lou Gossett. <laughs> you gotta say Lou Gossett there and so many others banking on Valerie to slip up, ready to get this case over with because it looks to be an open and shut situation. Not only are your handprints on the weapon, but your earrings were also at the scene of the crime. It also feels very drawn out to us, which makes it one of the more weaker points of the film. But I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy seeing Clifton Davis because every time I see Clifton Davis in anything, I have to sing the theme song from Amen. Ow, 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 shine for me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, shine. Hey, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now re-watching this older, you also notice that Dutch never really had any intentions on coming clean with his wife and being honest about his preference or his situation. It just happened to unfold that way due to the actions of Monica and Kevin. Not only that, but Valerie's suspicions begin to grow after she finds a condom in her husband's wallet. But we never mention it or bother to confront our husband, given the perception that she is hella naive, just downright stupid. What are you doing? But watching this now and just noticing the type of woman that she was, there is no need for me to be on high alert. I trust and love my husband. And even if in the back of my mind, I feel like something is going on, I'm gonna be delusional and completely ignore it. Not only does my husband love me, but look at this new life that he is providing me with. But this lifestyle is courtesy of the likes of Kevin, who supposedly just simply wants his friend to have the best. Okay. <laughs> Girl, the red flags were flagging. The only person at the moment who actually sees anything and decides to investigate is our bestie, Zahara, who gets photos of Dutch in compromising positions with the likes of Monica. You are barely and rarely when and where you tell me you are going to be. Now, Monica also this entire time has just been completely unraveling wanting so bad to have a sense of normalcy. I'm not content with my life. I want a family. I want a man who wants me. Like the, the, the things are very clear. <laughs> at those times in the movie, the subject at hand is not extremely subtle. Kevin, Mr. We have an arrangement. You should be content with the money and the lifestyle that I provide. And you can say, go and do who and whatever you want. What more do you want? I want what the likes of Valerie has, which is why I'm planning to Dutch and why I'm just so jealous of her. At her wit's end and clearly unsatisfied with being a beard for him, she begins to slowly self-destruct, try to endanger her own life, crying for help, crying for attention, slowly beginning to dive into self-medicating, all while Dutch is merely supposed to be there in her corner as counsel. I love when she pulls up on Valerie with that gun and she is just begging to be taken out of her misery and she's just yelling directly to Valerie, I have a man, I, I have a man that sleeps around. I want a man who wants me. I'm just so jealous that your lie is just more fulfilling than my truth. Like red light, red light, like Valerie, is anybody home? Nobody's home. <laughs> Nobody's home because we are choosing to trust and invest in our husband to no end. 
Not only that, but we have the likes of Ryan Chambers who just keeps conveniently coming around, invading their space, invading their home, displaying all of his little sexual exploits. You know, of course I can have any woman, anytime, anywhere I want. I'm free, like I'm the life of the party. Meanwhile, we are low key seeking attention and gratification by somebody at this function. And it damn sure was not Valerie. This is of course getting a rise out of Dutch. My, my daughter's upstairs we were never worried about the daughter we were worried about being exposed now leon in this role is just absolutely hilarious y'all want to come to a ryan chambers party like <laughs> hey this kevin's house like you ain't paid for nothing up in here is this not kevin's house why would kevin be buying the likes of you a home also you know getting into a hint of jealousy and of course we find out why but ryan chambers being the celebrity that he is why work so hard and give time to get a rise out of the likes of dutch why do your damnedest duty to try to push up on his wife when her bestie facilitates a photo shoot for your album cover, removing her earrings, which is how they got left at his place for evidence, and low key hoping to instantly remove a whole lot more pushing up on her. Ryan is devoted to being an agent of chaos, but why? I love how at that very moment when he's trying to push up on Val, Dutch just so happens to be showing up to his house to stop it. But why? Why she here, Ike? Why she here? Everything is pointing in the direction that maybe my husband is cheating on me with her. Of course, leaving the cops to believe that infidelity is the catalyst for her to commit murder. But aha, aha, Charlotte, woman of few words, who has clearly been dying to say something to Val, has been sitting in the back of these sister circle meetings, finally decides to expose the truth. You don't really know who your husband is. Take this room key and go to this hotel if you really want to know the truth. Now, Charlotte was moving the entirety of this movie exactly like Brady's character did in Temptation. I just wanted to put that out there. Once we go to the room, Valerie yet again wants so badly not even to take a precaution to protect herself, take that gun in at the suggestion of her best friend, still hoping, pleading, and trusting that her husband is who he says he is and is being faithful to her. But not by the looks of this room, child. The candles are lit, <laughs> dim lighting, very romantic, champagne. Only our husband isn't in here cheating on us with a woman. Our husband is in here with Ryan Chambers, who is very much so a man. Instantly and rightfully so, Val cannot breathe. I can't take it. This isn't what I expected. I could maybe handle the portrayal, even though it would still be wrong if it was a woman. How am I supposed to compete with the likes of a man? This is who you are. This is what you want. Why am I the last to know? Even though Val has the gun in tow, at that moment she leaves it behind and decides not to use it. I simply just want to get the hell away from you. Child, I love the way her husband chases her down the hall. Like, oh, it's not what you think. Like, what? <laughs> Were you not just rubber dub dubbing with and I refuse to let you go? I love Leon's acting here because you just see the type of energy that he was giving off right away before we actually knew anything about his diagnosis. He takes so much pleasure in the fact that Val is there, the truth is out in the open, you know, he's caught yet again another victim to put under my belt, like just absolutely sick. Meanwhile, Val is just falling completely apart. Drinking, I, 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 I just don't know what to do. Everything that I place faith in, my man, my marriage, my faith, my family, has just been stricken and taken away from me. Don't church me, don't minister me, don't tell me to turn to God. I did everything I was supposed to do under that vow, under the sanctity of marriage. I even saved myself for my husband. And for what? Look at what it got me. And to top it all off, since I still love my husband, let me ask him one thing. Cause this would prove to me, even though you were out there moving the deceptive way that you were, at least you valued and considered my life enough to protect yourself each and every time. 
because you did that, right? Absolutely not. Oh, Valerie's broken. There is nothing that you can tell Valerie at this point. I don't understand. This is my husband, someone who loves me. Why didn't he just tell me that he was bisexual? Because whoever said that he was just strictly bisexual? He could be that, but he could also be a man who is strictly using you as a beer. Does he love you? Yes. Does he love his daughter? Yes. But he also loves to sleep with other men. But in sleeping with other men, I would have to admit to myself, my family, my friends that I'm gay. Risking everything and everyone I hold near and dear. Also risking the idea of being excommunicated, exiled from people who just don't want to understand the mere idea of me being gay and don't want to accept me. We get more and more into those conversations with the character of Greg, as well as the treatment that he receives from the, you know, elder ladies, <laughs> the church community who just don't want to entertain the idea of a man being gay and sleeping with another man or even identify that he may be experiencing the same problems with his spouse that we experience with ours. What about this? What about that? It's not solely just gay man being down low, being promiscuous and spreading a disease. There are so many other factors and even be that as it may, if you are treating me like this, an openly proud gay man who is probably the least likely to engage in that type of behavior, what is to say about the other man who choose not to come out and live their life like the likes of Dutch? If this is gonna be their reception, why would they ever admit to wanting to sleep with men wanting to be bisexual or just being a closeted, secretive, sneaky gay man. Now with the likes of Dutch, I feel like the movie does do a good job at making him more of a vulnerable character, even though he is engaging in this distasteful ass behavior that is harming his child and his wife. When we have moments where he is vulnerable, he wants to say something, but he just feels like he can't, even though it's very selfish of him not to do so. The moments that we have with him and his father, who is very much so a man's man, you know, we take pride in the family, protect your family. How is this man who sees me a certain way, as well as my wife, gonna perceive me if I come out and tell them who I truly am? Be that as it may, you decided to make these decisions selfishly on your own. You didn't openly give your father a chance. You didn't give your wife a chance. You only put her health and her livelihood in jeopardy that you couldn't even bother to be protected for. All of my sympathy goes out of the window for not only situations like that, but you move me here under the pretense of new opportunities, new jobs, new everything, all the while you were moving here at the demand to be closer to your lover who could provide you with a better lifestyle. Cars, clothes, houses, money, all the while you are sleeping with him as terms of payment. You a whole sugar baby out here. Like get out of my face, sir. <laughs> Not you being here to provide counsel to the wife. Meanwhile, you are one of many who happens to be sleeping with her husband. Trash. But you know what? I can change. I can turn off the desire that I have to sleep with other men like a light switch. At this point, I'm in panic mode. I'm trying to turn back to the church. I just simply want to repair this and get my wife back. I absolutely love that moment when Dutch decides like, you know what, I'm putting all of this down. Kevin, I have to let you go as well as Ryan Chambers and get back on track with my wife, breaking it off with him. And he, like Ryan Chambers, displays this jilted lover type of energy calling Dutch all of these derogatory terms oh you blah 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 and I'm free I'm not like you I, you'll be back I'm like no, no 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 you're not exactly all that free even though you and your wife have an arrangement the fact that you and your wife have to have an arrangement and you have to have a beard means that you aren't as free as you think you are but everybody knows that change does not operate that way Matter of fact, it's way too late and we are way beyond that. Charlotte has also been walking around in the movie with a very sickly, pale appearance. You can tell that her health is failing. As we have Dutch begging and pleading for her forgiveness, 
we have Ryan Chambers roll up with the energy that he's on to not only ruin this whole shindig, but to also inform Dutch, as well as his wife, who's filing for divorce, rightfully so, that he has the gift that keeps on giving. And now you, as well as your wife, just might have it. Now, I absolutely love that scene, not only because Leon was acting his ass off, but just that impression that is on Dutch's face, even though he was out here moving unprotectedly, it never crossed his mind that he could be sleeping with somebody who was positive. It literally takes all of this for Dutch to come out, live in his truth and be honest with who he is and what he wants. Losing everything he tried to avoid in the first place, down to his wife and down to his family, who decide to move back to Atlanta and just be completely done with him. There was just so much eagerness for him to feel like, you know, maybe my wife is gonna forgive me. Maybe we can go back to the status quo. I was like, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> Of course, we do find out via testing. I don't know why it took Val so long to go take her ass and get tested, but she went finally and is thankfully HIV free along with her husband who also avoided getting the virus. But who committed the murder? Just as Val is about to be booked and arrested for this crime of passion, a bulk of evidence comes in displaying that it was never her to begin with. It was never her husband who was shot and killed, but it was Ryan Chambers instead. Shot down by his wife, all because he never gave her a choice, never gave her a chance, merely gave her the virus. Admittedly, in his eyes, became the boogeyman, became the monster decided to become a proud super spreader. Whether it's gonna be me, my wife, Dutch, his wife, Maya, whoever it may be, I'm gonna give it to you because somebody that I love and trusted decided to give it to me. Why consider your life when nobody ever considered mine or even the fact that maybe I was down low, maybe I have been sleeping with men, but what was the alternative? Me be out opening out of the closet to be shunned, to be called this, to be called that, instead of maybe living out loud and allowing you people to treat me as an other, I decided to give anybody and everybody the gift that keeps on giving. Our wife takes us out and of course she dies soon after being arrested, taking her own self out. Real, real tragic, real tragic like. Very, very cautionary, but it's always the person you least expect. Oh, he looks so good. Yeah, everybody always looks so good. Oh, they had too much money. They were too successful, too established, too this, that, and the third, to have the virus. I can't believe this. I love when Ryan Chambers looks at the camera. It's like, yeah, I was, I was you. I was the one who said it could never happen to me. Leon was acting his ass off in this movie. Now, in the end, Dutch is merely left to sit with the decisions that he made for himself and how they impact his family of course we have a suspected buyer roll love with the hey you know you got a little dust in your eye I could get it out you know what matter of fact let me go back and get in this call with my family like uh he is just so saddened at the fact like oh it, it was this me is this you know how I was moving what I was doing not considering my family trying to go around you know get some dust out of somebody else's eye yes <laughs> yes it absolutely was and now you have to sit with that the fact that you weren't honest with yourself and everybody else around you for the majority of your life. Meanwhile, Val, who just loved the idea of being a wife, being with her husband, has to finally make a big girl decision and choose herself, choose her life, and choose her daughter. Val's tale is absolutely a cautionary one that could have went absolutely left. Protect yourself, know your status, and know your partner's status, even if it is your husband. Well, you guys, that was my review for a cover. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh. <laughs> Please drop down and tell me, you know, what you thought about this film. I know I engaged a whole lot, but I just felt like it was a whole lot here to cover that I just couldn't, you know, walk across the street and act like it wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember to like, share, subscribe, turn your notifications on, please. I would love to have more and more people here in these lives to engage with me and engage with us in the moment that we are in the house. I'll see you guys next time for my next review. Bye.
Bye. <laughs>